Let our king.
Because of who you are, I give you glory. <laughs> because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I that again because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are
He's the giver of all life. From heaven he came down. And oh, what a joy I found. Oh, no, you were not there. You don't know when, you don't know where. What the Lord has done for me. He gave me the victory. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Again, we thank Brother Michael for leading us in praise and worship. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Pray with me just for a brief minute. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to look at your word. We ask you to give the congregation ears to hear and hearts to receive the word of God. Help me to make it very plain that we can understand it, we can grasp it and then we can live according to what thus saith the Lord. So we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles 15, 1. Yeah, Second Chronicles 15, 1. It's, uh, if you're Miss Crystal, it's the second scripture uh, on, your, on the first page. Second Chronicles 15, 1. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. Second Chronicles 15, 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, 
while you are with him. Amen. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Yeah. We're looking at Asa, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're still looking at, at the good. When the Spirit of the Lord comes and gives us instruction, gives us warning, then that's a good thing. It's when the Spirit of God quits talking to us. Yeah. And so part of Scripture, when Paul talked about uh, preaching and teaching the Word of God, it's warning people about how they are to live and what happens when they don't live that way. Amen. Amen. It's not popular preaching, but that's what we're called to do. So the prophet, and I'm going to tell you something, it's interesting today, the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Ardeh, he went out to meet Asa. You know, we have, uh, again, as I was saying before, and I'm going to keep repeating this, we, in our times, we got New Testament prophets who only prophesy good things. Yeah. As I said, like, you might as well call a psychic line. Because <laughs> they're going to tell you how good uh, you, you're going to have it, this and that. No prophet in the Old Testament, the prophets don't do that. Amen. When the prophet comes on the scene, it's because the people, uh, the kings and the, and the priests aren't doing right. Amen. And he comes to warn people, if you don't get your life together, if you don't get it right, God is going to destroy you. So notice what he says in verse 2. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa. Mm -hmm. See, as Christians, we got to be bold. You got to hear me. You better listen to what I'm saying to you. That's what that's, I'm talking as Christians. We, you, hey, you, better, you better listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. See, that's the way we were raised. That's why we didn't do stupid stuff. <laughs> Because our parents said, hey, listen up, boy. <laughs> and you knew to listen up. <laughs> and then they'd have you repeat it. Now, what did I tell you to do? <laughs> now we're talking about, we got to be so careful we don't hurt anybody's feelings. Look, your feelings going to really be hurt when you end up in Hades. Because you have rejected Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. So he tells them, he said, the Lord is with you while you are with him. See, that's absolutely true. And, and today, you know, people get so-called people, uh, people get so-called saved. <laughs> you know, I'm so-called saved. And they don't worry about how they live. Living, as my brother would say, Brother Donaldson, living foul. <laughs> don't bother them at all. Amen. You better listen up. You better listen up. See, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is making you holy. Hello. Amen. He's not making you unholy. He's not allowing you to stay the same. When the Spirit of God comes upon your, your life, you will dance like David danced. Amen. You take off your outer stuff and all, all the robes of your so-called righteousness and your station and your position and who you think you are. Amen. And you start to praise God. You start to dancing and twirling and giving God the glory because you know you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Lord. You'd have been lost already in hell and in judgment. But thanks be to God. I'm, th I'm glad somebody thought enough of me to tell me the truth. Hear me. You better listen. You better listen up. Amen. That's, that's us with the word of God. Uh, so I'm more concerned that, that I don't, that not, I'm, not, I'm not that much concerned about hurting people's feelings as I am about telling the truth. Amen. Amen. And he says, the Lord is with you while you are with him. See, that's conditional. You can't walk in any way you want to walk and expect the Lord to be with you. Right. Amen. The Lord is with you. Everybody got that? You, he's with you while you are with him. <laughs> Let's call Samson to the witness stand. <laughs> Samson got to messing around because he loved women. He got to messing around with women and uh, playing around and all this sort of thing come up with riddles and jokes and all kinds of stuff and doing things he wasn't supposed to be, do, to be doing. 
And one day, uh, fooling around with Delilah, and uh, he told Delilah the secret of his strength. <laughs> and the Bible says, Delilah said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Says so Samson got up and shook himself like he normally did. See, that, that's, that, for me and Calvin, that, that's, he, he flexed. <laughs> he did not know that God was not with him. So you've got a lot of folks flexing and do not know where the power comes from. Verse 7, 2 Chronicles 15, 7. We're still on the good. I, I, I thank God that he talks with us. Amen. He walks with us and talks with us. And every now and then, this morning we were talking about Simon Peter and Jesus. And uh, Jesus asked him those three times, uh, Simon, do you love me? And you know, it goes back to, again, Peter had bragged about, even if these fall away, not me. He meant it from the depths of his heart. But you know what? We can't stand without the Lord. <laughs> the, the Bible says, as water answers water, human beings, we, we answer each other. We, we as weak as water. Amen. Water, you know, water, we as weak as water. And so we understand that without Jesus, we are nothing. So the Bible says, but look at Second Chronicles 15, 7. But... You be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Hallelujah. See, as long as, see, we need to be strong in the Lord, strong in the grace that is in Jesus. Don't be afraid to, to stand out as a Christian. Don't be afraid that people know, well, oh, something's something wrong with her, something wrong with him, you know. He, man, look, I mean, he's always contrary. Yeah, as a Christian, you stand for Jesus Christ. The world is going one way and you're going another way. Amen. Like salmon, you're swimming upstream. Any dead fish can float downstream. Be strong and do not let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. First, uh, First Corinthians 15 tells us that. Look, look, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so be strong, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the labor of the Lord. For you know, you know, much as you know, your work in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. It's going to count for something. Praise God. So be strong. And don't look at human beings and situations and think that's it. God often works on the, behind the scenes doing things that we don't know what he's doing yet. But trust him. Trust him. As I say, this, uh, this is uh, uh, April, so we've been in existence at Friendship Baptist Church 100 years. It'll be uh, next Sunday, the fourth Sunday. 100 years. We come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. God's never failed. He's never failed us yet. Praise his holy name. That's how we got here. Trust in the Lord. Started out with prayer, five women praying that God would give us a place in Gerard that we would be able to worship and not go to Youngstown, Warren, and Niles to have to, have to go to church. hundred years later, we'll still, we are still here. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. God is worthy to be praised. It's, all, it's the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our sight. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. Be strong. We want to be like Caleb. <laughs> Caleb said, I'm 85. <laughs> he said, you mess with me and I'll knock you out. <laughs> I may be 85, he said, but hey, uh, you know, old meat is tough. <laughs> I ain't no tender fella right now. I'll hurt you. And he asked for Joshua, he said, hey, give me that mountain. Praise the Lord. The, so uh, we don't have to slink away. Oh, you know, I'm not as old as, I'm not as young as I used to be. You still got the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be strong. Yeah, so you may not be able to get around like you could get around, around but you can still pray and trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
And he said, your work shall be rewarded. Isn't that something? Your work, your work shall be rewarded. What an awesome God we have to work in us and then to reward us for allowing us, him to work in us. Praise God. So 2 Chronicles 15, 8. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Adad the prophet, he took courage. <laughs> he took courage, everybody. He took courage. Kind of reminds me, didn't we sing a song like that? Uh, let your soul take courage. God will not, uh, if we abide in him, I can't remember it right now, uh, but, we, but we are called to take courage in the Lord. That's what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. So that at different times, see, this is our responsibility. When you hear the word of God, don't just walk out of here and say, well, he preached the word of God. Uh, it was A, B, C, D. What you going to do with it? It's a soul, take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. <laughs> take courage. So he removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We got we to gotta restore the, the uh, living of God in our lives and in our homes and we're in our communities. So in other words, when we show up, we got to be salt and light. Amen. You got to, he restored the altar of the Lord. And again, you don't have to do that by trying to be mean or bad. You just show up with, the, with Jesus Christ in you and allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. Amen. And when it comes to how you live your life, you choose Jesus Christ and his word. And you, when you do that, then you, you'll be restoring some things that need to be restored. Amen. See, <clears throat> we've been talking about uh, uh, civil rights, not we personally here, but civil rights. And so, but we're trying to seek civil rights without a savior. So we don't mind being ugly and bad long as we get our civil rights. So we'll join up with the most wicked of people who deny God, deny his word, deny his principles, and, are, and, and, and they are an abomination in the sight of God, and we'll join with them for the sake of civil rights. We need to get right with God and do it now. Amen. Amen. Get right with God and do it now. We're responsible to live right. To live right. So, verse 9, 2 Chronicles 15, 9, Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those who dwelt with them from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon. Notice this. For they came over to him. People came over to Asa in great numbers from Israel when they saw the Lord his God was with them. See, I'm, I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, uh, if, we, if we look, act, think, uh, and, and uh, like the world, we disguise ourselves like the world, how do we expect people to come to us when we, when we, when we look and just like the world? But Asa took courage. He did what was, what was called people from Israel. He's in Judah, in the southern kingdom. People from Israel who knew what was right, or they were influenced to do what was right in great numbers when they saw that his God was with them. Now, we're not in charge of numbers, but what we are in charge of and responsible for is that people would see that God is with us. Amen? Amen? See, we got to live so God can use us anywhere, anytime. Amen. Amen. We need to live so people can see that God is with us. That's our responsibility. So that's what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. Stop letting the world conform us to its opinions, its thinking. Stop that. We need to live like Jesus Christ and live in the power of the Holy Spirit and we need to come up with the word of God. You see, uh, uh, when it comes to opinions, uh, everybody has one, but God is right on all things. Amen. God is never wrong. Amen. So uh, you go to find out, if you want the truth, you find out what God is saying about it. And that is the truth. So verse 10, so they gathered together at Jerusalem in the third month in the 15th year in the reign of Asa. And 2 Chronicles 15, 11 says... 
And they offered uh, to the Lord at that time 700 bulls, 7,000 sheep from the spoil they had brought. Praise God. See, from the war. There are the spoils of war. And what happens in, in the Old Testament, what happened, you know, they were the spoils of war. They won, and so they brought the spoil. They brought what they had won from, the, from other people. And for you and, you and me as believers in the New Testament, they're the spoils of war. And that is that uh, our enemies are the world, the flesh, and the devil. And what we win is fellowship with Jesus Christ, allow our lights to shine, and uh, we are able to impact darkness because of the light of Christ who is in us. See, we're, we're, uh, we're in a war. We are in a war. And, you know, the world is doing the same old thing. The devil, he does the same old thing. He doesn't have to come up with anything new. <laughs> and then uh, my stinking flesh is stinking like it always has. Amen. Amen. That's how you say, how you know you in the flesh? Because you're stinking. <laughs> Ain't no mystery. Because when you wash up in Jesus, you know, hey, I'm all right. <laughs> you don't have to wait till somebody else tell you, you know. Stinking thinking, as my sister says. Stinking thinking. Amen. And then the result. Amen. It's like living in filth and squalor and complaining about roaches. You better clean up. If you do that, then, then you, I mean, otherwise, you can get all the rain and everything else you want. As long as you live in filthy, they, they're going to be around. So 2 Chronicles 15, 12 says, They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts and, with, and all their soul. Isn't that something? They, they entered a covenant, a solemn covenant, in 2 Chronicles 15, 12, to seek the Lord God of their fathers. In other words, they want to make sure that they, they're getting it right. They're getting back to, you know, like uh, Andre Crouch said, take me back, dear Lord, to where I first believed. And, amen. I did. Take me back, dear Lord. Every now and then it's good to go back. Go back and, rem and be reminded. Man, you know, to be reminded how far God has brought us. They entered a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. So I'm here to challenge us, you know, in, in our hundredth year, we don't need to start half-stepping now. Amen. Need to press toward the mark with the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. We, we've come this far by faith, but we got a long way to go. Amen. Amen, a long way to go. So, so verse 13 of 2 Chronicles 15, and whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And the Bible says in verse 14, Then they took an oath before the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting and trumpets and ram's horns. See, what they're doing, this is a theocracy. God rules and reigns. And they're under the Mosaic Covenant. So based upon the Mosaic Covenant, they decide... This is what Moses wants us to do. And so we're going to seek the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And anybody that doesn't do that is put to death. Amen. The New Testament tells us that. People who, who sinned wrongfully with two or three witnesses, they were put to death under Moses' economy, under the law of Moses. How much sure punishment if you reject Jesus Christ you insult the spirit of grace. You refuse to come to know the Lord. How much sore punishment, worse punishment, are you going to have throughout all eternity? Because you have trampled the blood of Jesus. See, that's our story we need to tell people. Oh, this is, this is his story. We're telling you the truth. You don't want to face an angry God. It's, well, God doesn't get angry. Well, you haven't read the scriptures. You don't want to face an angry God, a God that all he has for you is wrath. You need to stop treasuring up wrath against the day of, of wrath. 
So verse 15 of 2 Chronicles 15, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath that they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their soul. And he was found by him. You got that? Uh, you might want to put a note there somewhere. Because people think, well, you know, I just, I can't find the Lord. I, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm praying and I can't, he's not answering. You need to seek with your whole heart. Amen. If you can't find the Lord, it's because you're not seeking the Lord. Amen. You're not seeking him with all your heart. And uh, because if you do, Jeremiah, you'll be found of the Lord. Amen. Lord's not, Lord's not hard to find. Amen. Just totally surrender. And, and you call upon his name and ask God to save you. He, he'll find you. Amen. But people want the lows and they don't want the Savior. Amen. And therefore they say, well, you know, I don't, I, I've been praying, but there ain't nothing happening. That's because you're not praying with your whole heart. Amen. You come to God on his basis and he'll be there. Uh, he'll be there quicker than anything that you, you can imagine. So the Bible says uh, he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. That's Old Testament. New Testament, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Amen, my brother. Amen, my brother. See, now here's how, this, this is why you got to be strong here in verse 16. Brother man had to go against his grandmama. It, it says uh, mother. But the way we look at it is often, you know, David, his father, and sometimes in the Old Testament, they, look, they say mother here, but I'm pretty sure it's his grandmother. So he removed Maaka, the mother of Asa, the king, from being queen mother because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's drawn pictures of private areas. Obscene. Asa cut down her obscene image, then crushed and burned it by the brook Kidron. Amen. Remember what did Jesus say in the gospel? He said, yeah, you better love me far, far more than mother or, mother or father. Amen. Some stuff you got to cut down. Amen. Yeah, and so uh, if your parents taught you what was contrary to God, contrary to uh, the first and second commandment, you got to cut that mess away. Amen. Get rid of it. Remove it. Remove it and follow the Lord. Because Jesus said, you have to love me far more than you got to love the, uh, uh, parents. The Bible says, now Esau wasn't perfect, so verse 17, but the high places were not removed from Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was loyal all his days. He also brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold uh, utensils. Praise the Lord. One last verse on the good here. Notice in verse 19, there was no war until the 35th year of the reign of Asa. That's the good. The brother was good. And the next is the bad. 2 Chronicles 16, 1. And the bad is all about this. He began to depend upon himself and his own human wisdom. So look at it, 2 Chronicles 16, 1. It says this. In the 36th uh, year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramoth, that he might let none go out or come, to, come into Asa, king of Judah. So you see, people were leaving Israel and coming to Asa. That should have strengthened him. So the king in Israel, what he does is he came against Judah because he's tired of losing people. They're going to Judah. All the good people are going to Judah. And so what happened is in 16.2, then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. Instead of depending upon the Lord, he goes to the king of Assyria. And remember, he had, take, he had got all the, the gold and the treasuries together. He takes them and gives them to uh, Ben-Hadad. And uh, in verse 3, he's saying this, Let there be a treaty between you and me, and 
there was war, excuse me, and there was between my father and your father. So just like my father and your father had a treaty, let us make a treaty. Instead of depending upon the Lord, he's depending upon the king of Syria. And so he says, uh, here I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. Verse 7, at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. See, once we stop trusting the Lord and start trusting in our own human wisdom, and you say, why would he do that? You know, I mean, here's, here again, uh, the prophet said to Asa, you, you've relied on the king. You haven't relied on the Lord. Look at uh, 2 Chronicles 16, 8. See, he breaks it down. And this is why I say in church, we just don't want to be shouting and hollering and screaming. Don't know what we're screaming and hollering about and shouting. He, I mean, he breaks it down logically. Here's what the, we're not the, he said, we're the Ethiopians, 2 Chronicles 16, 8. We're the Ethiopians and love them, not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hands. See that? He delivered them into your hands. See, when we come to church, it's not just to preach and teach and to holler and make you feel good. We need to be presenting truth to you. Amen. And, and so that you can think critically about, he says, think this thing through, Asa. You relied upon the Lord. You were strong. God gave you rest. Now, you get nervous, and all of a sudden, you're going to take the, 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 the treasury, the gold and so forth, and give it to the king of Assyria, or king of Syria, and trust in him. Does that make any sense? No. See, it doesn't make sense for us who have been trusting in the Lord for a long time to then start depending upon ourselves. Amen. Amen. But sinful human nature. Sinful human nature, fallen human nature. It's so easy to start depending upon yourself. Amen. You know, uh, uh, there are different times in the ministry when God has had me at a place the first time. And I remember, uh, for instance, I was preaching at the YMCA, 500 people, and that, all the high expect, ex, uh, expectations. And so I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. The Lord come through. Amen. But the next time, it's like, well, I've done that before. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so instead of trusting in the Lord, uh, we start doing stuff that w without prayer and depending upon him, and we find out where does that get us? Nowhere. Amen, my brother. Nowhere. And so the Bible says, uh, and what happened in verse 9, understand this, and this is a verse that uh, we've talked about Many of us as a, a, in, in the family of God here, Second Chronicles 16, 9. I got the, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. You see that? What a word. Stay loyal. God is looking for people who are going to stay loyal. Hallelujah. See, no matter come what will or come what may. So when I was working at General Motors and I was a union worker, there are times I had to tell a union, I got to stay loyal to Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't do what, you want, what you're talking about. And there are times uh, in my culture, they say, well, look, we need to do this and that. No, no, Christ is more important to me than my culture. And that's why I say unashamedly, I'm not a black Christian. I'm a Christian. My, my, my Christianity is not defined by my culture, by my color. It's defined by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And when people say, well, you know, America's this, America's that, you can't make it in America, America's against you, I say, well, here's, here's my answer to that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all you have need of, he gives it to you. He provides. Your heavenly Father has need. He knows what you have need of before you ask. 
I've seen God change people's hearts to give you what you need. Why would you turn away from him and trust in culture, the union, or, or these other things? That can, and, and they can't, listen, um, we got another situation coming up. And, uh, and so now we got uh, electric vehicles. And I read something in the paper, the union is saying the same thing they said when I started seven, you know, back in 1970. Is, oh, we got to make sure this happens. But things ain't changed. You got the same solution in 2021 that you had in 1970. It didn't work in 70. <laughs> you coming up with nothing new. It's the same old stuff. But for you and me to trust in the Lord. So, you know, uh, we just let's say, look, let me sing this song to you. We come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Let me sing something else to you. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Amen. I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm saved. You are sanctified. We're set apart for God's use. He promised never to leave us. Never to leave us alone. He promised. His word is true. His word is good. So the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. So I challenge us to be loyal to God. Be loyal, be steadfast, be unmovable. Be loyal to God. He will not let you down. Praise the Lord God Almighty. See, God's plan for you and me is to look like Jesus. So everybody out there that can raise their hands, you don't have to, but everybody out there can raise their hands and say, I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. Then let me tell you what God's plan is. Right now, you are the sons and daughters of God. It has not yet appeared what you shall be, but when he shall appear, you shall be like him, for you shall see him as he is. That's God's plan for you and me which means sometimes I don't get all I want because there are some things I want are not going to make me like Jesus. Amen. There are some things that, again, dear old sweet uh, Sister Jones. <laughs> Pastor, I met this man. I said, Pastor, I prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, I got to have him. I got to have him. Lord, if I don't get him, I'm going to die. She said, then I got him. <laughs> Wished I had died. <laughs> I said, Sister Jones. <laughs> Amen. Some of you don't know Sister Jones. <laughs> Amen. Sister, Sister Jones. <laughs> yeah, I said, I, yeah, there's some things we just, Lord, I got to have this. I got to have this. And the Lord said, no, you don't want this. So there are things because God is giving us and making us look like Jesus. There are some things we don't get. Amen. And later on in the process, you go, boy, I'm so glad I didn't get that. Amen. So the prophet tells Asa, in this you've done foolishly. I'm going to stop here. Uh, just a second. We'll be through with the bad. Uh, you've done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. See, there are consequences for sin. People say, Does God judge sin? Yes, when you sin, when I sin, he judges it. The consequence here, he was having peace. People were coming to him from Israel. He was having favor before the Lord. All that stuff stopped when he's turned his back on the Lord. Verse 10, 10 and 11, and we're going to stop here. Asa was angry with the seer or the prophet. And put him in prison, for he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. See, when you and I as believers get into sin and get into the flesh, we do some stupid things. Sometimes we actually say, that, that brother can't be saved. Well, he could be. Because when we, when we turn our way from the Lord and turn into self, I've seen people that we do some stupid, stupid things. So he was angry. What you angry at the, at, at, at the seer for? Yeah. Amen. Telling the truth. But God was the one who's going to do this. The Bible says uh, in verse 11, 
Now the acts of Asa, the first and last, are indeed written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Let, uh, uh, next week, Lord willing, we look at the ugly. The ugly and when Asa did not seek the Lord. Amen. So the good and the bad and the ugly. What are we looking at? We want to make sure that we stick with the good. Amen. Amen. Don't get off into the bad where we start dreaming up our own reasons and our own ways to live this Christian life. Father, thank you for your time. Thank you for this time in the word of God. Asa, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thank you for how you helped us through the scriptures to proclaim them. And we thank you for the congregation who listen and will apply the words of God and will apply this to their lives as we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Have your way. Bring glory to yourself and draw us nearer to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord.